Hello, sweeties. Today I'm going to talk about something a little controversial, maybe a lot controversial, but I'm kind of taking my husband's and daughter's advice and I'm going to start talking about hot topics, um, kind of commentary type video, kind of. Um, these are not going to be uh, an all the time thing on my channel, but they are something that I do enjoy. They're something that I have been thinking about filming. I'm going to state this right up front, you guys. This is my opinion, and you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to like my opinion. We can agree to disagree. We're all grown-ups here. Um, I think that sharing ideas of people who have differing opinions is something super positive. So, as long as it's done in a constructive way. So, having said that, I'm just going to dive in. This is going to be a rambly video. I do have notes, but it's, I'm still going to ramble. Just prepare yourself for that. Grab a cup of tea, get a cup of coffee, and we're going to talk about Tess Holiday being on the cover of Cosmo. First of all, I want to say that I have no problems with Tess Holiday. I think she's beautiful. I have no problems with Tess Holiday being on the cover of Cosmo or anywhere else that she gets invited to be. I think it's cool. I would love to be on the cover of Cosmo. I'm too I'm probably too old though. <laughs> but I don't have a problem with it. Um, I watch TLC. I watch my 600 pound life. I watch my big fat fabulous life with, is it Whitney Waythor? That's what I want to talk, say her name is all the time. And I'm going to look it up really quick. Whitney, Whitney Waythor. Whitney Waythor. Whitney Waythor. She's the star of My Big Fat Fabulous Life. I think it's a cool show. I think that she's rocking having her own reality show. That's cool. I also would love my own reality TV show, but I'm too boring. Um, I don't have a problem with fat people. Your girl is fat. I've been fatter. I don't have a problem with anything like that. I've been noticing over the past probably year or so that I'm starting to see more normal sized men and women in the media, in magazines, on the internet, and that's awesome. When I was growing up, like all you saw in magazines and on TV, on the cover of magazines, um, were models, like, I don't remember her name, but I grew up in the 80s, so, like, I guess I saw Twiggy, um, oh my god, what is her name? I keep wanting to say Gloria Vanderbilt, and that's not her name, <clears throat> but, the point is, is that all you saw were models who were super thin, who were very kind of all the same. You know, they were thin. They were small boobs, small butts, flat tummies kind of thing. And to be honest with you guys, I never felt any kind of way about it. I knew that I didn't look like them. And I didn't really care, even when I was growing up. I might look at a model and be like, oh my god, I wish like, I wish I looked like her. You know, but it was never something that like really planted its seed in my head and I obsessed about and worried about and oh my god, boys aren't going to like me because I don't look like that model who's on the cover of, you know, teen or whatever. 
honestly, like, it just, I knew models were different, you know, and they are. Models are generally very tall, very slender. Okay, I'm, I'm short and chubby, so that's what, that's what it is. <clears throat> it just never, it just never really bothered me that I didn't look like whatever model was super popular at that time. Um, and I know that referencing my notes right here, if I keep looking down, I know that Tess Holiday, Whitney Waythor, basically anyone who is fat in the public eye has been and is being accused of glorifying obesity. And I don't think that's true. Um, I think that Tess Holliday made the quote somewhere, and I don't remember where. I think it was an interview that she did um, pertaining to Piers Morgan's tweets about her. Um, she said that I'm not trying to make anyone gain 300 pounds. I'm literally just existing in my body. And I kind of feel that is accurate. I feel like Whitney also is just existing in her body. And this is the body that she has. This is the body that she's chosen. This is the body that they are living in right now. So you might be wondering if I don't have a problem with any of this, what do I have a problem with? What I have a problem with is the fat acceptance movement that kind of surrounds people like Whitney and Tess. Um, like I said, I don't believe that they are trying to glorify obesity. I don't think that they're out there recommending that young girls gain massive amounts of weight to be beautiful like they are. I use quotes because I think a lot of people are beautiful. <laughs> Not because I don't think they are beautiful, because I think both of them are. Um, I'm going to read you the fat acceptance movement definition that I found on Wikipedia. Um, the fat acceptance movement, also known as the size acceptance, fat liberation, fat activism, fat, fat of ism, fat justice, or fat power movement is a social movement seeking to change anti-fat bias and social attitudes. Areas of contention include the aesthetic, legal, and medical approaches to people whose bodies are fatter than the social norm. The movement has been criticized with Kathy Young writing for the Boston Globe claiming that the fat acceptance movement is hazardous to our health. And Barbara Kay writing for the National Post stating that the fat acceptance movement is not the answer to obesity, which I agree with. However, studies have shown that stress is linked to obesity and that encouraging fat people to focus on losing their excess weight has been linked to an increase in overeating, leading to more weight gain. The modern fat acceptance movement began in the late 1960s. I do not disagree with that definition. I do not disagree with the fat acceptance movement at its core. What I disagree with is there are some members in the fat acceptance movement who I feel like are drilling this down to fat is beautiful. If I'm fat, I'm beautiful and I don't need to change for any reason. They promote health at every size. And this is a point you might not agree with, but health at every size is a lie. They're lying to you. I, I disagree in the fact in, in the statements that people make Whereas obesity, if you're obese, you are going to be type 2 diabetic. You are going to have heart disease. You are going to have joint problems. You are going to have X, Y, Z, A, B, C. I disagree with that because health is such 
a an individual thing like like you can't say because someone is fat that they're going to develop all of those things and some people do say those things that's not accurate either but you also can't say that I'm 300 pounds and I'm perfectly healthy maybe maybe you are but for how long maybe you think you are but you're not maybe you're perfectly healthy but you could be so much healthier and I'm not I'm not a proponent of the diet culture I don't think diets work but that's kind of what I feel like some members of the fat acceptance movement are saying is that diets don't work um, the diet culture is flawed the diet industry is broken so because diets don't work I'm not gonna lose weight because diets don't work I'm going to stay being 300 pounds and that's just what it is diets don't work they don't uh, you know what they do diets do work if you change your eating drastically in any way shape or form um, you could do the cabbage diet and lose weight. You could do the hard-boiled egg diet and lose weight. You could do the watermelon diet and lose weight. What doesn't work is that those things are not long-term because at some point you're going to start eating something other than cabbage soup and you're going to gain all your weight back and then some. That's why diets don't work. What works is long-term lifestyle changes um, I can tell you that I didn't weigh 300 pounds at my highest I probably was about 210 I'm not sure because I stopped weighing myself I told myself that I was just fat that's just the way it was my family there's a lot of fat people in my family and I'm fine the way I am I think I'm beautiful the way I am I'm not gonna lose weight I can't lose weight I just can't I lied to myself for years I lied to myself for years and when I stopped lying to myself I gradually started getting healthier and I thought I was perfectly healthy and I was I was healthy I'm healthier now I know see members in the fat acceptance community will tell people you don't need to lose weight it's just society telling you that you need to lose weight your body wants to be the size that you are because that's what size that it is that's where it wants to be those are lies societal pressure was not making my back hurt societal pressure was not making me breathe heavy when I took a walk societal pressure was not giving me migraines two or three times a week um, me being fat was me not taking care of my health was at fault for all of those things I know my body didn't want to be 210 pounds because it told me every single day it told me do something different it told me by hurting so I changed you know I stopped lying to myself and I started making changes and it's been a slow road and it's gonna be a slow road um, I do have PCOS so that does make it more difficult to lose weight but I am losing weight um, 
I just don't feel like some members of the fat acceptance movement are helping anyone. You're lying to people. You're telling them that it's okay to be fat. And while in theory it is, it may not be okay for that person. It may not be okay for anyone. I don't know. See, I'm a big proponent of do what you want as long as you're happy. But I have a real hard time believing that morbidly obese people are happy. They might say they are, but I don't think you are. I don't think you are. And you have people like, like Virgie Tovar who are out there supposedly a, a proponent for the fat acceptance movement telling women that if you ask for a smaller piece of birthday cake, that is you caving to patriarchal issues. <sighs> what? <laughs> just, just what? Like, maybe I'm not hungry. Maybe I just want a smaller piece of cake. And this is, this was, this video was so funny to me because like, Literally, she said that, that asking for a smaller piece of cake is basically you being a bad person. It's basically you caving to societal pressures. It's you caving to the patriarchy inside your head that tells you you should want a smaller piece of cake. And hands down in my family, hands down in my family, every single birthday, every single cake occasion that comes around, the three people who are either turning down cake outright or asking for a smaller piece of cake are my husband, my father-in-law, and my father. <laughs> Hands down. It is us girls who are like, yeah, maybe you could make that a little bigger. <laughs> I mean, it's just so funny to me. Um, but I don't think things like that help. I don't think, I don't think seeing your weight as a societal issue is helping. And I know that, I know that people being fat is a societal issue and I don't, I don't like obviously promote fat shaming. You shouldn't shame anybody about anything. It's not your business <laughs> to do that. Um, I'm a big proponent for being happy. And if being fat makes you happy, truly deep seated, I was meant to be fat. I never want to be anything else. If that's what you want, then go do it. But you have to know that long term, you might be suffering the consequences of your now choices. And I do believe that obesity is a choice. I do believe that morbid obesity is a choice. I know that when I weighed over 200 pounds, it was my choice. I didn't see that at the time, but I see it now. I chose to be over 200 pounds. I chose it by eating ice cream all the time and cake and cookies and carbs like pasta and potatoes and junk food that has zero nutritional value. And I chose it by not living an active lifestyle. I chose it. And now that I'm making different choices, my body is changing again, slowly, but better than not at all. I know I started all of this talking about Tess Holiday and kind of verged into other things, but that's kind of just the way I ramble. <laughs> what do you guys think about Tess Holiday being on the cover of Cosmo? Do you agree with me that it's pretty freaking cool? Or do you think that 
do you think more along the lines of like what Piers Morgan says? And he says like that it's dangerous and that she's glorifying obesity and things like that. What do you guys think about Tess Holiday being on the cover of Cosmo and the fat acceptance movement as I've spoken about it? Um, so leave your comments down below. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed, please do so. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.